We're staying in our moredimensioning.dwg file, and we're going to take a little look now at baseline dimensioning and continue, which is a great command for continuous dimensions as well. Now, what I'd like you to do is double click on the wheel to zoom extents, first of all, and then pan upwards a little bit and zoom in on these grid lines at the bottom of our floor plan. The reason I want to do that is we've just got a nice clear space there where I can show you exactly what baseline and continue do. You'll find baseline and continue on the annotate tab on the ribbon. And you can see we've got continue there on the dimensions panel, continue and baseline. Now, before we do either of those, we're going to place one linear dimension. So I'm just going to hit escape a couple of times. And what I'm going to do is place a linear dimension first. So we go linear like so. Now, all I'm going to do is literally go from this endpoint, second one in, click to this endpoint here and click again and just drag my dimension down a little. Doesn't have to be exact and click there like so. Now, the reason I've done that is when you've placed one dimension, I can now go here to continue and it will go automatically from that dimension that you just placed. So if I zoom out slightly, I can then jump along, click to that endpoint, click to that endpoint, enter to finish, and they are all separate dimensions as well. So if I press enter a second time, because it's still prompting me to continue, I've now got three separate dimensions, as you can see, like so. I'll hit escape to deselect those. Now, here's the interesting thing though, I can continue from a different dimension if I want to. So I'm just going to zoom in on this corner and you can see we've got a 2896 dimension just there. I'm going to go back to continue now like so and you can see it's trying to continue from that last lot of dimensions we placed. So what I can do is I can now right click and go to select and I can pick off of this dimension and come down here. I'm not going to worry too much. I could potentially go to there, let's say, and click, and then enter once, enter twice to close continue. And you can see I've continued that dimension down. Now, obviously, that's a completely null and void dimension because it's going just to the end of the grid line, which doesn't really serve any purpose. But because it's an individual dimension, I can quite happily select it and delete it like so. So once that's selected and deleted, I'm going to zoom out slightly pan across again, and I'm just going to select all of these dimensions using a crossing selection, and I'm going to delete them. Now, we're going to repeat that workflow, but we're going to repeat it using the baseline setting, which is slightly different. Now, your baseline settings are normally set up in your dimension style. Let me show you. If I click on this little arrow here on the dimensions panel on the annotate tab, there's the dimension style manager. So I'll go to M, arrowheads, millimeters, and I'll go to modify. And then if you look here, can you see we've got baseline spacing in the lines tab? So what it means is it's going to place those dimensions with a 10 millimeter baseline spacing. Now, these particular dimensions, if I go to fit, are annotative. So they'll be working with the annotation scale that is set in the model space. So if I just cancel that, and close the dimension style manager. Down here, the annotation scale is set to 1 to 100. So that means that they'll be 100 times bigger. So that means 10 times 100 is 1,000. So the spacing in model space full size will be 1,000 millimeters. But that's to accommodate in the layout tab our 1 to 100 viewport here, as you can see it in the layout space. That's why they display so neatly and tidily there, because they've got an annotation scale of 1 to 100 in the model space. I'll just hit Escape to deselect the viewport and go back to the Model tab so that I can show you the baseline tool. Let's go back now. I'm going to place another linear dimension like I did for Continue. So I'm going to go from the second one in there, the second grid line in, click, and then click on the endpoint of the next grid line along. Drag that down. Don't go too far. Right down here, you'll see why in a minute, and click there. Now, the benefit you have with baseline is it uses the extension line of the last dimension placed as the baseline. So if I go up to the dimensions panel, click on the flyer, and select baseline, can you see it's coming off that extension line on the left? And as I go along now, click once there, and click once there, like I did with continue, and then enter once. It's asking for another base dimension, which I haven't got. 
enter again to close the command. So you can see there now, it's put a baseline spacing of that 1000 millimeters that I mentioned between each of the baseline dimensions placed. Now, all of these are individual dimensions as well. So one and two and three, like so. They're all individual dimensions. I'll just hit escape to deselect them. And what I'd like you to do now is for the next video, leave your baseline dimensions in place. Don't delete them. You'll see why when I show you what we're gonna do next. But you can see how useful there baseline and continue are. If you need to work from an edge and give people dimensions from an edge, you'd use baseline. If you need a continuous string of dimensions, you'd obviously use continue, and they're all individual dimensions as well. So you can delete the ones that you don't need later, perhaps, when you're detailing your dimensions a little bit more intricately to make sure that they adhere to what you want in your AutoCAD drawing.